Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Mezon African Motives, still working on industrial electronics and two. So we have the question paper which was written November 2020. And we just have to, we just want to do some revisions, yeah, some sort of revisions. We've done some of the questions and we just want to focus on the remaining questions that we never talked about so that we just see how they might ask these questions as we finish up our revisions. So I give you on question number one uh, to choose an item from the column B. This is your column B, this side. So you're choosing which item is it A, is it B, is it from this column? uh that match is a symbol in column a so this is your column a like they want you to see which symbol is this okay so what is this this is a switch as you can see guys it's open here so this is a switch and our switch is on uh, d so this was going to be d all right we move on to the 1.2 guys this is a diode which is a pn junction diode which is the g so we've got a g here then we've got another diode, but there are some rays which are taking in. So this is a photodiode. Okay, where do we have a photodiode? On J. Okay, that's a photodiode on J. Okay, uh, what's this? As a transistor, even though they didn't show this part, but that's a transistor, it does not change. And it's a NPN because it's going out. If it was like this into, that's a PNP. This one is an NPN transistor, so it can be A. Okay, so this can be A. 1.5, that's a battery. As you can see, these are cells connected together to make a battery, and the battery weighs our battery as B, all right? Uh, they, we are having a resistor, but the arrays which are into, which are going into uh, uh, the, the, the resistor there. So that means it's a light-dependent resistor, this one. And where do we have light-dependent resistor on E? So this can be E. All right, another, tra another transistor, but this one is going in, like I was saying here, it's going to be a PNP. So this is a PNP transistor. Uh, do we have that here? Okay, yes, we have this here. PNP transistor, so that's our edge. Another diode, but this one is reflecting our light. So this one is emitting light. So that's an LED, light emitting diode, that's our K. All right, 1.9. What's this, guys? As you can see, this symbol, this is the same. So that's a capacitor. Okay, take note. If it was like this, then that's a battery like what we had or cell. But this one is a capacitor. These two are the same. So a capacitor, that's our L. And definitely our, our voltmeter. Uh, the last part there, that's our voltmeter here. Do we have a voltmeter here? Yes, yeah, so we've got a voltmeter on I. So that was going to be I. I think uh, some of these symbols, guys, we are used to do them, and we just have to revise as much as you can, okay, so that you know your symbols and everything. All right, let's check the other part that we are supposed to work on. All right, for question four. On question four, we are asked to complete the following sentences by filling in the missing words, write only the word or words. So it can be a word or it can be words. Next to the question, a diode is A, offering a low resistance. What is it? So what, what, what do we have there? What, what, what is a diode? What is it? Okay, so you're actually defining. So this is a two-terminal device, okay? So a diode is a two-terminal device. So that's a two-terminal uh, device, okay? Offering a low resistance when... When does a diode offer low resistance? When it is forward biased, okay? So this is when it is forward biased, okay? And a high resistance when that's reverse biased. So here, uh, 4.13, it's reverse biased there, 4.13, that's reverse uh, biased, okay? Under forward bias condition, the diode will act as a or as any what? So what does it operate as it? Under forward bias, it conducts both this flow of current there. So it's actually X is a conductor. All right. And under reverse bias condition as a, because there's no flow of current, so it acts as an insulator, just like wood, just like plastic, just like any insulator because there's no flow of current. Okay, 4.2, draw. A 
and label the characters. Take note what you're supposed to do. You are supposed to draw and label the characteristic curve for each of the following 4.21. We've got a photo diode. So you're not going to waste much time. Just want us to see what we have there. Did I? Okay, I just wanna show you here. Okay, so that's a uh, photo diode. Uh, right, I see here, draw and label. All right, all right, all right. I'm the one who is now confusing myself here. Okay, this is a characteristic curve that you only need. Uh, we do not want you to indicate that uh, this is a photo diode. No, 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 no. That's not like that. You, we are just straight to the characteristic curve. Okay, so that's what we have uh, for our uh, photo diode, uh, the characteristic curve uh, having the VR and the IR, which is the currents. I think it's a clear presentation, guys. This one, I think it's clear. Okay, light emitting diode 4.22. All right, so that's for the light emitting diode, which is uh, the LED, light emitting diode, which is opposite. Actually, it opposes the photo diode. Okay, so that's what we have. And I think everything is clear there. Then you have a reactor on 4.23. We've got a variator there. Okay, a mark for accurate sketch and other for labels. So these are the most important part, what they need when marking. They're going to mark for accurate sketch and other marks are going to be for labels. So you must be able to label your axes. Each and everything should be according so that you obtain full marks. Okay, anyways, you're not going to waste much time there. Okay, refer to the... Five character six, the six, not five. This is six, guys. You see, Roman numerals now I'm confusing between six and five. Okay, this is six. So refer to the six character six of a Zena diode below to answer the following person. Okay, so, so remember, sometimes they might ask you to draw this characteristic curve. Now they've drawn it for you. And after drawing, they say, answer these questions. Where, where are the questions? Where are the questions? Okay, let's check on the next page. The questions for this one, I can't see them. Okay, which means I skipped the page. Okay, let me do this, guys. Let me do this. Okay, so actually, uh, the questions that were given there was for us to name, uh, to give the names there. Yeah, I don't know what happened with this paper, but it was for us to give these names here. The the VR, the VZ, the IZK, the IZT, the IZM. That was the question for you to name because you are given them. Okay, so that's 4.3. So 4.31 was for VZ. Okay, the name of VZ in full. That's a Zena breakdown voltage. IZT, Zena test current at which VZ is measured. IZK, that's the Zena knee current, is the minimum Zena current and IZM, the maximum Zena current. So actually uh, that was a direct question and uh, we just have to work on much questions as, well as we can. All right, so like I said, I actually missing some of the questions here. I actually do not know what happened with this or maybe they are on the other page here. Yes, they must be here. Let me check from this page because there are some questions which are not there. And where are they? Okay, there we are. So this was the question exactly. Write the following abbreviations in full. Okay, so that was it, I think. Okay, then question five, draw a neat labeled uh, circuit diagram that shows the difference between a basic operation of a NPN and PNP transistor under the following convectional flow of current showing the direction of flow of... So they take note the under... The principle of convectional current flow clearly showing the direction of current flow. All right, so okay, let's just see what we have. That's question five. All right. Uh, so remember, we've got two, the NPN and the PNP. So that's our NPN here and our PNP. All right, so I think I explained these diagrams in another video. If you watched, I think you understand what's happening there. All right, a transistor has got a VCC of 10 volts uh, collector, current IC 100 microamps and the resistance RC of one kilo ohm. Calculate the emitter current if the transistor 
base current is 55 microamps. Um, actually, uh, remember, we, we just have this, oh, let me just have to, I just have to write this aside. Uh, whenever you're dealing with currents, we are going to take them from this formula. Okay, remember that, remembering that IE is equivalent to the base current plus the collector current. So here, what do we have? Do we have everything? Because the question is for us to calculate the emitter current. If the base current is 55 micro, so the base current is there is 55 micro. So we are going to have 55 micro, which is 55 times 10 to the power of minus six plus the collector current is already given. Our collector current is 100 micro amps, which is plus one, 100 micro times 10 to the power of minus six again. So that one is you and your calculator now. That's you and your calculator. Okay, just make sure that you put in your values properly. So that's um, 55 times 10 to the power of uh, minus six, minus six like this, plus 100 times 10 to the power of uh, negative six again. Okay, so that's it. We have got, yo, this is big, 1,55 times 10 to the power of minus 4, but this is not normal. So you're going to multiply by 10 to the power of 6, at least to convert to micro. Okay, times 10 to the power of 6 is now in micro, which is 155. So you're going to have 155 micro amps. So that is the emitter current. Okay, the 5.22, the base current if the emitter current is 1. 85. Take note, we've got IC and we now have IE and we need the best current. So first, let us make the best uh, current to be the subject here, 5.22, because remember we said IE is equal to IB plus IC. So now we want to make the best the, the subject. So that means the best current is equal to the emitter current minus the collector current. So do we have the emitter current? Yes, we are given now the emitter current of 185 milliamps and milli, that's 10 to the power of minus three. So it's 180 times 10 to the power of minus three minus the collector current is not changing. It's still at 100 micro, which is 100 times 10 to the power of minus six. So that's you and your calculator again. 180 times 10 to the power of uh, negative, Three, whatever that we get, we subtract 100, that's 100 times 10 to the power of uh, negative six. So you're gonna have something like 0, 0,17, something like that, something like that. This, is this real? Is this real? What type of a value is this one? Okay, let me check something else. This is 185 milli and we've got 180 here. So that is me. That means we've got a wrong presentation that we are going to have. Yeah. So it's 185. Yeah. Okay. Let's correct this. This is 185. Okay. 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 I'm going to change. I'm going to change here. 185. Like that. Okay. So that's it. Uh, I've got 0, 0,1. Still does not make sense to me. Okay. Anyways. Um, just multiply by 10 to the power of three to convert to milliamps, maybe it can make sense. Okay, so that's 184.9 milliamps, 184.9 milliamps. Or you can actually round off this to 185 milliamps. You want, you can just leave it like that, still one and the same thing. All right, uh, name four precautions to be considered when using a DC voltmeter. You are in an industry there. What do we, what are we supposed to, to have when using that? Okay, the correct polarity should always be observed to avoid the damaging of the meter. Okay, always collect, connect a meter in parallel with the component being measured. Select the highest range first. If you are unsure of the voltage being measured, then to use a low range, okay, so use at the highest range, always take the load effect of the voltmeter into account. So that is the most important part that you're supposed to have whenever you are dealing with a voltmeter. I think it's clear that one. And question six, um, I hope we're gonna win, yeah. 
Let us see what do we have. Okay, so actually this PDF, I don't know what's happening. All right, so name three materials that can be used in the manufacture of light dependent resistor. Which materials we use when manufacturing? So we've got lead selenide, lead sulfide, cadmium sulfide. Clear, clear one. 6.2 show by means of a neat label diagram uh, the construction. Take note what we have. All right, so there we need of a label diagram, the construction of a bimetal strip. All right, so let's see what do we have there. All right, all right, all right. This is what we have. So uh, as you can see, guys, we just need to show the copper and the ion strips there. I think it's uh, pretty clear. And the other one is a bimetal uh, strip, the operating principle by means of an, a symbol again. So that's how we're gonna show uh, the ion and uh, the ion now connected in the in the internal and external, then the opposite with the copper in the external and in the internal. This is the most important part. You can actually obtain from us. So you are explaining using a diagram. The question said explain, but using a diagram. So that was the question there. And the 6.3, uh, that is the one that we had. Then 6.4, consider the network below, calculate the overall gain. So whenever you're given to calculate the overall gain, guys, you are going to use this formula uh, for overall gain, uh, whereby you can actually uh, work with both, because this is, we are going to have the first gain, the second gain. So instead of doing that, just calculate it once. So you can have the overall gain as, the first gain that we are going to have here, which is AP1 plus AP2. So AP, which is all, AP1 is going to be P2 over P1, okay? So that's gonna be 10, the logarithm of P2 over P1, plus also this one, 10, the log of now P3 over P2, just like that, P3 over P2. So you can insert your values into the calculator, 10, the logarithm of P, two, which is 20 over P1, which is five plus 10 log of 100 over 20. So that one you can use your calculator, you're gonna obtain something like 13.01 decibel. So that's what we had guys from Amazon African Motives till we meet again.